Hello everybody, this is Evan Abrams for av3software.com, your place for post-production plugins and products. Today I'd like to share with you the top five reasons, top five reasons why you should get the trap code suite from Red Giant. We're in version 14 now. There have been some amazing improvements to this advanced particle and simulation environment. You can do so many interesting things in the trap code suite, but I want to just tell you the top five, the top five new improvements that are really going to make you jump right into trap code suite 14. So without further ado, let's crack open After Effects and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so I'm here in After Effects to show you thing number one. The first thing is the addition of something called a designer palette. Now, the designer palette is a whole new way of working with these effects. So I've used trap code particular for a long, long time, trap code form, long, long time, and it's always been kind of frustrating. For those of you who have done this, you know that these are highly advanced very complicated particle effect that are sometimes esoteric. You've got all these all these systems over here in, in these stacks that you have to twirl through and dial in to figure things out. Not super intuitive. And we've seen a lot of these big time powerful effects move to a more abstract way of dealing with these things, which is the designer palette. So here in particular, for example, you can click the designer button to call up this window and this really neat window here comes up and it's doing a preview. It's doing a looped preview of the thing you've created. And rather than displaying all of the settings over here in a vertical list, you have it all visually and it's broken down into the various categories. So let me just go through here and give you a little tour, give you a tour of this stuff and why it's so exciting. The first reason is you've got your presets. So if you come over here to the corner, You've got so many different presets, just places to start. I know, speaking from experience, I've been confronted with a blank canvas and I'm just so frustrated, I don't know where to go first. But in this, you're able to pick something that's kind of close and build from there. Maybe it has the kind of motion you're into or the sort of colors, or it just speaks to the kind of thing that you specifically need. And then you can kind of tweak and get yourself there. And once you've kind of chosen where you want to start, you then come down here and start messing with all the little facets you can change. And all this is the same stuff that you find in the vertical list, but it's all broken down very nicely so that you don't have to get confused with things you don't need to look at. So you can start by customizing your emitter type. So when you select the emitter, you know, the emitter type properties show up over here. Now, there's another type of preset you can enjoy too. We have blocks that you can put in. You're slotting in these little like Lego blocks that are making different changes. You could be choosing from an image here. You could be choosing, you know, give me the default, give me the box, give me the grid, uh, you know, have it emit from a light, have it emit from an object. Spoiler, that is one of the interesting things that is new, but you can just choose it visually. And then you can define the motion. You can start to define that visually and you can tweak these numbers nicely spaced out, nice and visual, and it updates in real time. So if we have the uh, direction spread, if we start increasing that, you can see in real time, it updates. And this preview is isolating this effect so it doesn't render anything you don't need. And you can really fine tune it. And you've got particle types, all this great stuff. You can choose your physics, your gravity, your auxiliary systems, everything in here, visual, wonderful, seamless. And this is something that features on form and particular. This really speeds up your workflow. It really speeds up getting creative and dialing in to exactly what you want to see because you can focus so much and you don't get lost in the numbers. Thing number two, the second really interesting, really fun update is the addition of multi-systems. Having two systems combined into a single use of the effect. So here we're using form and we've got two forms going on. We've got this kind of you know, yellow Corona and then the, the inside, the, the blue part here. And you can see one's kind of a hemisphere. And as it comes around, the outer sphere is definitely outside the inner sphere. Now, generally before, if you were using multiple instances of an effect, they just wouldn't mesh with each other well. You'd have to choose what's on top of what and how they blend. And that's just no fun. Now, inside the designer, inside the effect, we can have the master form, which is this orange stuff. And then we've got the second form, and that's the blue stuff. 
and the two of them exist in the same 3D space. You can just keep adding more and more forms. Let's add a third form, maybe. And uh, this third form, let's make it, I don't know, we can make it a box. That's pretty fun. And we can go into its particle type. And it doesn't need to be spheres. It could be like glowing spheres. And, you know, let's take the feather down on that. So they're sharper spheres. And I think let's add to them a fractal field, uh, a default fractal field. So it's a static kind of cube. Let's make that, uh, let's get that size down a little bit like so. And things are looking pretty good for this cube. Uh, let's see, there we go. Two like that. So it's just got these two weird kind of walls. You now we're just adding these weird rainbows in here. That could be fun. We're just dealing with little presets. Boop, boop, hitting the random here. Yeah, there we go. And you can start to dial in specifically what you're after. Do, do, do. There we go. And this could be you know, like a green. Awesome. Set its blending mode also to add. Now we've got this green thing in there. It's really just to kind of contrast what's going on. So when we apply this, you can now see there it is. And as we rotate around, things are getting in front of it, things are going behind it, and is in that space. It's really useful to be able to layer these things how you expect them to be. You can create uh, amazing nebulas and star fields, and as you whip a camera through them, they don't overlap and it's not weird. So having this kind of control to have it all in one space, phenomenal. So thing number three, the third thing, kind of segues from that multi-system situation we were talking about. So it's great to be able to add systems, but it's also really great that they all respond to the same global parameters. Now, global parameters are things like your physics. So the, the particles all live in the same physical world, and maybe they all have the same kind of shading situation. So in this example, we're looking at some burning embers. This is the welding burning embers preset, and it's set up so that it is working off of bounce physics. So it's bouncing off of things, it's bouncing off of this solid that we've put down here. Now, maybe we want to go in here and say, all right, it's fun to have these orange bits, but maybe we need some green bits or some blue bits. I don't know what's going on in your, in your fancy world, but here's what we're going to do. We're going to go into the designer, and we're just going to add another system. So here we are in systems. We hit add. Now we have system number two, and system number two are just these white, white spheres. That's nothing yet. You know, let's change the color up. Maybe we change the color here to sort of a bright blue, that's okay. And uh, you know, maybe we deal with the opacity a little bit. So it's got a little bit more random opacity, it doesn't need to be that opaque anyway. You know, the size and rotation, you know, the size could stand to be a little bit smaller, I think. And you know, just overall, you should probably be just emitting, you know, way more, way more particles than that. Motion is all good, everything's all good. In fact, I'm going to delete the motion and by deleting the motion, that means system two is taking the motion of the master system. So it's looking above it and saying, hey, what's, what are you doing? I'm going to do that too. So it has the same motion. And that's also what's happening with the shading, physics, you know, your gravity, your air bounce, and your uh, spherical fields. All of that, it's taking all of its cues from above it. So if I hit apply, you can see right here that all of these blue bits are bouncing as well, right? Which is pretty great. It's all doing, doing these sweet bounces. Now, something that didn't happen, if we go back into the designer here, you'll notice the auxiliary properties. You know, it's not the same auxiliary properties. So we need to delete that so that system two is taking its auxiliary property cues from what is above it. And now it's all behaving the same. So that's a great way to sort of add, add more types of particles, add some more variation, and it keeps the same physical world as long as you're not overwriting it with new things. And this is a very powerful, very easy way to just start adding layers of complexity all within the same realistic scene. So when you're doing VFX, when you're adding explosions, if all of your physics are set up to be realistic and you just add some more things in there, it's gonna work wonderfully. The fourth very exciting thing is GPU rendering. 
I'm sure you've been seeing this all around. Everyone's jumping on the GPU train. Uh, GPU rendering, while it's hard to really show you in a tutorial what's so great about that, if you've been using GPU rendering on other things, if you're set up to have the hardware, then this software is going to support you there. Uh, you can render the acceleration on the CPU or the GPU, and you can do it either direct or by streaming. Now, I will warn you that the streaming doesn't always work. There are certain functions, certain things are too advanced for the streaming to work. But I found with my hardware setup, when you switch it to GPU, it's going to go quite a lot faster when you preview these things. And really, when it comes to previews, you can dumb it down to just a motion preview if you really only want to see where things are moving, how it looks, how much space is it taking up. And then you can bump it up to the full render, then you can bump it up to the full render and the depth of field. But this GPU stuff, it is working, I mean, it's all pushing it into your into your hardware. So depending on the power of your graphics card, that's really gonna amplify how quickly you can get beautiful results out of this thing. So definitely something to think about when you're speeding things along. If you really wanna make use of your excellent hardware, then you really wanna be upgrading to version 14 of Trapcode. All right, number five, the fifth thing, and what I think is maybe the most exciting, at least for me as a motion graphics kind of guy, Trapcode now comes with a heap of sprites and objects, .obj models. Why is this exciting? Well, have a look at this example. We have just all these little nice little circles. Now, originally we would have had to make or import our own little sprites to make this happen. Well, now in the designer palette, we can just go in here to particle type, set it to sprite or textured polygon, we choose the sprite we want, and we have this massive list, truly massive. Uh, let's say we go into 2D shapes here, and we don't want circles. We would like, we would like some pluses. And now, boom, here are the pluses. When we hit apply, it automatically drops the plus onto the timeline where it needs to be, just like it was traditionally. By swapping things out here in the designer panel, we're really able to leverage this massive library. And you can build your own custom library, you can add things to it. You can still use uh, the shapes or objects that are hanging out on your timeline if you want to you know, point this to your own, that option is still there. But another thing that's here is the ability to have you know, not only the box grid, the box strings, the spheres. Uh, you know, we're here in form right now, and in particular as well, we have the option of having all of our particles emit from an OBJ model. So we can select .obj and we choose the object. If you don't work in 3D, you know, you can just download an object or you can select from these many interesting objects. So we could have this tetrahedron here, which uh, let me just reduce the size a little bit and I'm gonna just reduce my uh, dispersion a little bit so you can see it is this tetrahedron. And let me just fly around with it in 3D. You'll notice that it's emitting from all of the edges of this tetrahedron. So how interesting is this? If you make your own objects, if you download objects, then you'll be able to load them up in here and use them as the emitter. It was very powerful. This is sort of the advanced level stuff that when people were integrating between 3D and 2D, this is, you know, this was well in the purview of, of people who were incredibly expert a lot of resources, but now it's available for you, for anyone who is downloading the stuff and making use of it. And you've got the massive library to get you started making interesting things. That is really the, the strength of this gear that really allows you to start making interesting things right away. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Evan Abrams for AV3Software.com with the top five things that are new and improved in the Trap Code Suite, now in version 14. Head on over to AV3Software.com. Follow the links in the description to head on over there and get yourself a license of this amazing suite of tools. These advanced particle systems, you're going to really love them. AV3Software.com, your source for post-production plugins and programs available at a lower than market rate. It's pretty great. You can enjoy amazing discounts over there and you can keep all your licenses in one place. And uh, if any of this sounds good, follow the links in the description and start playing around with these things. So I've been Evan Abrams. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to AV3 on all of our social medias and we'll see you around for more amazing products right here.